And speaking of dreams, our first honoree knows a thing or two about them. Chairman and CEO of DXposito and Partners, Daisy Exposito Uya, is a pioneer in American advertising and is a recognized authority in multicultural marketing and brand communications. Prior to founding her agency, Daisy was chairman and CEO of Young and Rubicam WPP's The Bravo Group, which she helped launch and build into the largest U.S. Hispanic agency of all time. But long before Daisy could dream of Madison Avenue, she and her family were immigrants and political refugees from Cuba. Everything Daisy has, she worked hard for, supported by her parents, teachers, mentors, and everyone who supported in her. Talking to Daisy, I've learned so much. She told me that life is about learning from difficult challenges and that it is the struggle in achieving our achievements that give them their value. She has been able to accomplish so much and it's inspiring to see that she's been able to remain true to who she is and where she came from. Daisy, thank you for everything you've shared with me. I'm so grateful to have another strong, smart, and bold woman in my corner supporting me. Please join me on stage to accept your award for inspiring women and girls to dream big and be open to the many possibilities for their future. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I want my money back. I was expecting a big snowstorm. <laughs> um, not a pretty day, but you know, I woke up and I was I, w I felt cheated. Where's the snow? Uh, anyway, thank you very much, Marilyn, um, and thank you, Girls Inc., for this honor. I, right now, I feel very lucky uh, to be honored, but I'm lucky to have the opportunity to meet such a young woman as Marilyn. Um, we chatted on the phone for a while, and after hearing her story, she inspired me. Um, her fierce commitment to her goals in the face of adversity, her will to go against all odds. Uh, Marilyn, you have developed the self-confidence and the unique strength and spirit to win your acceptance to the prestigious Notre Dame in the field of engineering. And this, this is not a small achievement. So my sincere congratulations. Heeding the Girls Inc. call to action implicit in their mission, you are being strong, smart, and bold. And those three words have stuck with me. Um, I've, I've, you know, I, I, I think many of us practice it, but to make it a mission and to live up to that is, is certainly uh, important. Uh, Marilyn, this is proof of your inner strengths and of how you've devoted to creating yourself in life. Your achievements also serve to prove the impact on transformation that Girls Inc. staff and volunteers can have in the lives of young women's lives. Forty years ago, I chose a career in film and television production with a degree in communications. Uh, and I went to the New York Institute of Technology when it first turned into a co-ed school. I was one of the few women in the class and certainly the only Latina in the Manhattan campus. I think this experience prepared me for the real world. Forty years later, Marilyn, you have chosen a career in engineering, a field that is underrepresented by people of color and specifically women. Uh, take advantage of that singularity and don't let it frighten you. It is that diversity you bring to the field that will make you succeed even more. As Latinas, my advice is to embrace your roots with pride and respect for who you are. I know I have done it all my life. It is what has made me value and see the beauty of diverse people and perspectives in this multicultural world that we live in. Through the years, I have found that there's no substitute for authenticity. In my field, I have leveraged that authenticity to better understand and relate to a promising consumer spectrum that's, that was soon to change our country to the new America we are today. As Marilyn was saying, I left Cuba as a political refugee with my parents and sister. And as an immigrant, it's not easy to start your life all over again. 
It is challenging. We were, we were vulnerable, yet resilience, the resilience of my relatives and my ancestors, the lessons of my father working multiple jobs, my mother working in a factory, my grandmother keeping her grace under the pressures around her, they all taught me a fundamental lesson. Learn to separate yourself from any discouraging element of your external reality that may threaten your dreams. My dad used to say, you can, you, you can lose all material things in life, but an education will be with you forever. To which I add, don't let anything bring you down. Zoom in on your goals. Some people ask me, what's my formula for success? And I, I don't think there's a formula for success. There are motivational books and seminars, uh, and, but each of us is an individual. And what I've learned is that our individuality can greatly benefit from listening. That is, listening to the right people, those who believe in you, those willing to bet on you. My husband encouraged me to take a huge risk when I thought I wasn't ready to be in Madison Avenue as a creative director. He told me, take the job. Mentors are important. Look for them. Embrace them. My first boss at PBS, a Latina, Raquel Ortiz, was a game changer for me. Alicia Conil at Conil Advertising, my first job in the ad business, she literally pulled me out of my shyness. She empowered me to go out and sell the ideas because you see me standing here, but I'm still shy deep down inside. And then I had a handful of women at Young and Rubicam who helped me along. Jane Bright, Nancy Smith, Joan Carrigan, and the list goes on, who were key in my development and growth. There were also some great guys along the way. Uh, and I guess all, all in all, I was also lucky. And I did listen to them. So trust your gut and follow your passion. I think that's a secret of mine. My passion for Hispanic marketing communications in America developed into something close to a mission upon which I developed a sense of pride and responsibility. Success is never a selfish or isolated event. We belong to a larger family, a community, that larger body of people that in the end are the ones who provide meaning to what we do. Tomorrow is International Women's Day. March is Women's History Month. Let's welcome these celebrations with a couple of facts. As published by the Wall Street Journal, the famous glass ceiling becomes a very hard to break concrete ceiling for women of color who only make up 3% of the C-suite as 71% is still white men at the top. Or the other fact, according to the World Economic Forum, Gender parity won't be achieved until the year 2133. That is 115 years from today. So tell me, ladies, who among you is willing to wait another 100 plus years to achieve parity? It's insane. So Girls Inc., you're doing the right thing. So girls, there's a lot to be done and it all starts with each of you having the faith in yourself and the commitment to do it. Discover and embrace aware, the special awareness of yourself. Be strong, be smart, be bold. Don't let any walls stop you from dreaming the dream, your dream, and making it happen. Dreamers are welcome. And dreamers are necessary. It is a great sensation being here, and I share this recognition with all those strong, smart, and bold women in the audience. Some of them I have the pleasure to work with, and they're somewhere here. So this I share with you. And I dedicate it to the girls in my life, in my family, and most especially to my 93-year-old mother, who's the strongest, 
and the most beautiful girl I know. Thank you very much, Gelsing.